let me start by showing you this article. And I, and I do this uh, with, with these articles specifically because I want to make sure everybody realizes we're not just pulling these things, you know, out of thin air. These are conversations that actually happen. These are articles that actually exist. And these are ideas that we did not come up with. Business Insider says a book published nearly 25 years ago predicted America would hit a great crisis climaxing around 2020. And that up next is a millennial versus boomer standoff that will usher in a new world order. They say America sees a turning every 20 years as one generation displaces another. And the dynamic between one particular generation entering elderhood and another entering young adulthood creates a crisis every 80 years, according to a theory prophesized in Neil Howe and William Strauss's The Fourth Turning. The authors wrote the next crisis era would start around 2005 and climax around 2020 and would involve millennials and boomers fighting over the shape of the world to come. There are some similarities between recent events and the book's predictions. The 2008 financial crisis can be seen as the catalyst they mentioned. And in 2020 and in early 2021, unrest has shaken the economy, politics, it says the economy twice, <laughs> and the economy, okay. It's unclear whether the fourth turning as how and Strauss characterize it is really happening right now, but the parallels are certainly eye-catching. There's also some other, uh, there's other, other theories. There's also Thucydides' trap, which suggests that whenever an economic power is about to displace the principal superpower, war breaks out. In the past 16 major instances, 12 times there has been very serious war. Many fear that we are now entering this period with China. I guess the bigger question is, if these academics predicted this was going to be the fourth turning and we are going to enter in some catastrophic period, if people can see Thucydides' trap, are there efforts to prevent it? And before we open, go into like the bigger discussion, I'll just point out, uh, they say that the last 80-year period, start, and I guess it, it started just after World War II, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. why don't you explain like what, what this means? <clears throat> well, the whole thing, you know, so the fourth turning is the fourth season. That's the winter crisis. And, you know, so they call it a saculum, which means a long life. Um, this goes actually all the way back to the Etruscans um, prior to the Romans. But it starts... Let's just say it starts in the spring with a high, um, and then it goes into an awakening, which would be the summer, and then the fall is called the unraveling, and then the winter is the crisis period, and it keeps turning. I heard a really good guy actually interviewing um, uh, Neil Howe, I think it was, and he said, like, you know, if history doesn't repeat, it surely rhymes, because every single time these crisis periods come back around, they're not exactly the same but they resemble each other and there's, there's core tenets to them that resemble one another. And, um, and yeah, they, they surely said like the, the book came out in 97. They said somewhere around 2005, give or take a couple years, there's going to be an inciting incident. And if it comes later, it'll probably come at around 2008, right? When two thirds of the boomer generation, I think it was, would uh, be eligible for their social, social security. So that was the housing uh, collapse right there. And that would be an economic inciting incident that would lead into, and I wrote some things down, we can get to it later, but they, in chapter six of the book, The Fourth Turning, there's eerie, like very eerie kinds of predictions that go right into what you could call now the winter period, the crisis period. And then Game of Thrones, they were like, winter is coming. The yeah, long winter. But, uh, uh, but does that mean we're through the worst of it? We're, we're on our way out towards this, you know, beautiful utopian springtime? It's very interesting because, like, they, uh, in the book they said it, will, it won't be any shorter than 15 years. It won't be any longer than 20 years if history repeats in the same way. Um, it's never gone any longer than 20 years. So after, because I think Neil Howe works in D.C. now, and he advises people, and he said somewhere around 2028, it should be concluded. And that's when the high, the next high will start. And if you think about it, like the, the crisis is like a crunching period. And anytime you come out of a crunch, it feels like a high. There's a big restructuring. So uh, I've heard 2025 is the year to look at. So then when did the, for the last springtime start? The last springtime would have been... Man, um, 1945? just after 1945, I mean, that, that seems like a pretty definitive end to the crisis period. Well, that means the crisis period reached its end with mass bloodshed and 76 million dead. When, yeah, yeah. When was the New Deal? Because apparently that was, they also mentioned that in the book, the New Deal. Because they, they, they don't just talk about like war, but for some reason, when you go back 80, 90 years, you, you look at World War II, Great Depression, 80, 90 years before that, give or take some civil war. 
Before that, the the last winter was the revolution. Before that, because they're talking mainly Anglo-Saxon history, uh, the glorious revolution in England. And so it, it lines up when you look at it. It definitely lines up. There's other <coughs> authors who popped on to 1933. that. The New Deal, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the, the Glorious Revolution in England was like when they made Prince or King John sign the Magna Carta. Is that what that was? Was, was that it? Know, was six, that the it was sometime in the 1600s, 12, I think. Oh, that was 1200. Yeah. Okay, yeah, never mind. That earlier, was yeah. four turnings before. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I've noticed that in 2028, this year you're saying might be the new awake, or not the awakening, but the, uh, the high. The high is when graphene is purported to become peak, which means that society has completely... in in. in inundated itself with graphene like we're in a, instead of using steel we're now using graphene for buildings touch screens battery power electricity all that interesting yeah th there's a lot of predictions elon musk says 2023 we should be able to expect um super intelligent ai i mean these are all you know speculations do you want me to just read just like two paragraphs of what they predicted would happen in this um, yeah, period it. yeah okay so they said Around 2005, a financial event will likely spark the the coming crisis. A succession will be spoken of, he, uh, or succession will be spoken of heavily. Wait, wait, wait. Secession? I'm sorry, secession. Like seceding, S states seceding yeah. from the union. S and they said it could be something having to do with like taxes and IRS. But was it? They said that was going to happen in 2005. No, no. They, they said starting starting in 2005. So they're saying there will be a financial event is usually what sparks these things. And but then the after crisis. that, they're talking about during the entire crisis period, you'll see these things come up. So secession will be spoken of heavily. A potential terrorist group may blow up an aircraft and claim to have portable weapons of mass destruction or nuclear weapons. The U.S. will um, potentially strike um, the responsible country preemptively. I don't know what that means because, the, you know, they, they, they already attacked. They already attacked. Um, some will blame the president for conco uh, concocting the attack for political purposes. Militia groups will rise up against um, urban gangs, uh, cyber attacks. CDC may announce the spread of a new communicable huh. uh, virus. This is all in Chapter 6. I, wow. I'm not making this up. What is happening? <laughs> you know, uh, a new communicable virus that will reach densely pop populated areas and kill some. Uh, I'm trying to use as many verbatim words as I can. Mandatory yeah. quar quarantine will happen. President uh, will order National Guard into major cities. Uh, again, urban gangs battling suburban militias. And uh, calls mount for the president to declare martial law. Insurrection um, will... Um, I, I, I know they said that uh, several times in Chapter 6. I just didn't get the exact sentence. But they mentioned insurrection several times. And all events will escalate. They're like... Every, the inciting incident will set off a chain reaction of other events. And until the climax, there will be nothing that brings down the intensity. Every so inciting like, incident. Like World War II, when World War II officially ended, boom, springtime next. Mm -hmm. So that means 2027 is going to be brutal. It's going to be absolutely chaos. I mean, the theory is maybe it was 9-11 that sparked this. And that was the... the aircraft thing that they actually mentioned and no, now but they, they, this is the brutal ending to oh and they wrote when they wrote this when in 1997 it was published in 97 which means that i think they started writing it in 88 with a different idea so wait, wait 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 they wrote in, and they published it way before 9 11 and said someone will get an aircraft that's crazy yeah they they also mentioned and this is just in the book i did a podcast on uh, kyle kingsbury um not too long ago and he I turned him onto the book and then he hit me up. I didn't even hear this part. He was like, in the very first chapter, they mention Bill Gates, eugenics, and uh, depopulation in the same sentence in, in 97. What? what? Yeah. And, and, uh, or in the same paragraph. It's one of those two. And I didn't even catch that. And then they, so they mention him a lot. They mention Al Gore a lot. Um, and so they, they also give like what you, what you would call a constellation, like people born under certain, like, we would all be millennials, I imagine, and so we're born during the unraveling, and we've only known unraveling and crisis. I think I think he might be a, a it's 40, called like an Xennial. Yeah, Generation Y. I was no. told growing up. No, Generation not quite X, like it, tail end of Generation X. Okay, seventy nine yeah. was the year. Yeah, so that was that would be tail. tail there end was no of that. crisis when I was a kid. It was beautiful roses. It was awesome. So you would be considered a nomad, and I would be. We'd be considered heroes. People, How old are you? Uh, I'm thirty eight. So okay. I was like right yeah. at the beginning of it. And then uh, people born in a crisis period <clears throat> period are called artists. 
and then people born during a high are called prophets. And mm. so they, they, they go into a lot of detail as to why they're named that. And, and so they talk about the boomers, their role in this crisis, Generation X in this crisis. So they, they, they predicted insurrection. Mm -hmm. They predicted militias. Portable weapons, crashing now, a plane. A lot of this stuff, you know, I will say, we'd have to go into the book. And I'll tell you this. I didn't read the book. Maybe they say, here's a hundred things that we think will happen. And then you just cherry pick the seven that are relevant to us and go, aha, that proves I'm right. Hey, not really. So is it just like they threw a bunch of darts at the wall and said, we'll see what happens. And then we're, we're cherry picking. I'll tell you exactly what it is. Cause this, I was listening to it this morning. <clears throat> Everything I said, I didn't really leave out anything. If I might've left out anything, it would have been one thing. Um, and this is all in like two paragraphs. And so they... What they said was right afterwards, they were like, likely none of these things will actually happen in this way, but the underlying tone will, things like this will happen. This will be the nature of things to happen. And so th there wasn't much other than this. This was like two paragraphs. I just distilled it down a little right, bit. Right, 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 right. You know, so they, and then they went on to say like, in a crisis period, if it, if tensions keep rising and there is any spark of violence, it will likely lead to war. So I'm, I'm trying to use their words as much as possible. If it does lead to war, it's likely to end in total war. The, the enemy rendered nil. Um, and afterwards, one society dies, a new one is born. And basically, there's, there's no way to stop a winter period from coming. But do they think that the United States is going to enter a new spring? Or in that context, what if China crushes the United States and destroys our society? In that sense, what they would say, because they, they, they do say that it is possible for the United States to be the, the loser in this. And they're really talking mainly, it's centric around the U.S. So when they do talk about this, um, they say that no matter what, the spring is also coming. So spring will definitely come, but that's not really saying much for the, the losing side. You know, it's crazy is that you go back 80 years. What do you got? The end of World War Two. Mm. You go back 80 years before that. What do you got? End of civil war. You go back 80 years before that. What do you got? The revolution. End of the revolution. These are all wars. Crazy. And dude. what they say is every single time, if there's war, the most um, powerful weapons of war are definitely used. There's there's no way around it. So you look back, you know, the the um, atomic bomb at yeah. the end of World War II. Before that, what was the most powerful thing? The, the Gatling gun? No, the Gatling gun, I think, was uh, 1873, maybe. Okay. My gun history good? No, probably not. But uh, they were using percussion revolvers. I think they were, man, I, I don't know a whole lot about guns, but I'm sure a lot of people are like, I'm surprised you know those things existed. Uh, they had these, uh, I'm pretty sure they had percussion res revolvers. Basically, you would load the charge, like, you know, uh, what, is, what is it called? Muzzle load? But mm -hmm. it's like you, you'd pour into the side of the revolver and, and then you put a, a percussion cap on the back. Mm -hmm. And then there were a couple different models. Uh, really amazing technology for the time, I'd, I'd say. There was one where it had two triggers. You pull one to, to ro rotate and pull the hammer and the other to fire the hammer. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're not particularly convenient, but it was like, it was, uh, I think it was the Lon London Armory. Was it London Arms Company? I don't know a whole lot about this stuff. I, I should learn my gun history. And uh, they were selling to the Confederate. I think they were selling to the Confederates. And so they were, they were giving them these percussion rifles. So that was like really revolutionary tech at the time mm. that you could carry around this loaded, you know, I think they had, what, eight shots maybe? And so f coming from the muzzle loaded era of just like, you know, stuff in the ball and you know, mm -hmm. through the muzzle and then firing and then doing it again. All of a sudden, these guys had small arms where they could go boom, boom, boom. So that's, that was legitimate technology. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.